Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing our analysis of the Circa Millions uh, entry that we are playing for the season. I encourage all of you to uh, go back to my preview last week, where I go into more detail about my process and my philosophy of, of playing these things. But essentially, if you are picking up for the first time, the Cliff's Notes is, is our entire goal in this contest is to beat everybody else. It's not to beat the bookmaker. It is not to get a certain percentage right. Our entire goal is to beat everybody else. So if we were going to presume that there's no real edge in beating the NFL lines, which is really the only thing you can presume, honestly, uh, in a situation like this, then as a result, the entire goal is to attempt to pick teams that no one else is playing and, and attempt to gauge what types of teams are going to be popular and either fade them or actually go in direct leverage against them. And that is our entire goal for this contest. Um, so every week we are going to, and, and listen, and, and if we do that uh, over a period of 700,000 years, we're going to win one of these times. So uh, that's all we can do. The two ways that I have to look at results are well one it's obviously fun to see how we're doing okay like what our record is because that is what you get judged on at the end of the day so while it's not the greatest idea to be results oriented results do matter you know as far as money goes so but as far as intellectual development goes it doesn't really matter how we did what we're trying to analyze every week is whether we were successful in picking low owned teams because theoretically that is all we're looking to do here and just kind of let the coin flips happen and let, let variants just go after it. Okay. Um, so let's start. And then, so let's start by reviewing last week, and then we're going to review our, our criteria for what types of teams that we're looking at picking. So first of all, um, we actually went four and one uh, last week. And as you'll see, about 140 entries went 5 and 0, 916 went 4. And when you see the distribution of results here, it's pretty much what you were expecting, you know. Um, but the most important thing to, to deal with is whether we were successful in picking low owned teams and what we can learn from our mistakes. So you look at the breakdown uh, for last week, and let's remind everybody who we took. So we took, we went four and one, we took the Colts, we took the um, Buccaneers, we took the um, Packers, we took the Rams, and we took the Jets, all right? So... It looks like we did a pretty poor job of this. Now it's 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 ironic because the, the the probably our best result theoretically was our only loss actually. So we did take the Colts, and the Colts were not only very low owned at six hundred twenty five picks, but also the Jaguars were one of the highest uh, owned teams. So we did a successful job in not only picking the low owned team, but actually getting direct leverage against them. The rest were, were pretty poor, if you want to know the truth. So the Vikings, I, I, the Bucks, I didn't think would be this high owned. They had 825 people. So we got to think about what we did wrong here and, and what our criterions are, what our criteria is. So then uh, we're going to get back to the Cardinals in a minute because we were going to play the Cardinals, but we did not because they were a plus seven. And one of the things that we've been talking about is to avoid the key number games because pushes are pretty bad. Um, so we love the card. We like the Cardinals. We thought they'd be low owned, and it turns out they were one of the lowest owned teams on the on the on the slate, the second lowest. And the Commanders were really high owned, so we were able to get like incredible leverage playing the Cardinals. But we, I opted to ignore it because of the plus seven. Um, the Packers, I mean, 759, they were higher on than I thought they were going to be. Um, the Rams, they were pretty, that was a pretty good one. So only 582 people took the Rams. So that was pretty good. 
And the Jets ended up higher on than people that, that I thought. So I'm willing to at least think about throwing it, throwing the, not throwing the results out as kind of an aberration. But I'm going to talk through my process again, and I think it makes sense. So let's think about what types of teams people like to play. They like to play home teams. They like to pay, play favorites. And they like to play teams that have like kind of good quarterbacks. They have this impression of not only just being good, but also being, you know, just having famous guys. You, you like to play teams with guys you've heard of. That's just what naturally people do. And then we talked about people trying to play teams that are within these certain key numbers. So if you, you know, if you want to play a favorite, you'd like to play them only laying, say, two and a half. Something psychologically about that three number, yes, it's more likely that it lands on three than all the other numbers, but people, I think, over overcompensate for that, and they will never lay three and a half in a contest like this. They're, more li- they're super more likely to lay two and a half. And likewise, on that seven point number, people would love to lay the six and a half, but they don't want to lay the seven and a half. And as far as underdogs go, you'd want, you know, you would think people would want to take the seven and a half, but never really take the six and a half. And likewise, you you expect them to take the three and a half, but not really take the two and a half. So ideally, in this perfect world, the 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 optimal picks, I believe, are going to be underdogs road teams uh, and teams that are kind of uh, on the wrong side of those key numbers. So like, say, so, so underdogs, you want to take them getting six and a half because everybody else is taking them getting seven and a half. Uh, you want to take underdogs getting two and a half because everybody else is taking them when it's three and a half. So you take the ult- everything together. You want to play teams that are road underdogs getting six and a half against teams that are good with like famous players playing. You know what I mean? That's essentially what you're looking for. Now you're not going to get all of that all the time, but that's what you're looking for to be contrarian. Now I'm not saying these are going to win, but I think that that's a still a really good way to analyze the psychology of the public to figure out what people are going to do. And then you can also look at, at, at what teams did this last week because people tend to be quite recency biased. Um, the other thing is you could go to one of these sites that actually attempts to track them for you. So let's 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 do that for this week. Like the official uh, circa uh, lines aren't going to come out for a little bit, you know, maybe an hour or two. But um, I think I know what we're going to do here. So let's first take a look at, for example, NFL picks consensus. This is one site that does it on covers. Now I don't really know like who these people are, but for now let's just presume they're representative of of the circa pool. So. What we're going to do is kind of take note of which teams are at least predicted as being the lowest consensus, because that's what you're looking for. So you see Miami as getting 72%. And check this out, actually. You have one of those key numbers. You have Miami, they're projecting with 72%, and they're only a minus two and a half point favorite. Okay, And they're coming off a you know, pretty, pretty good win last week. Um, they are on the road, so that's not what people like to play. So you can't get everything. But I think that New England plus the two and a half at 28 percent is already a pretty good candidate play. Um, Chicago, Tampa. This one looks like really good. I mean, you have, first of all, Chicago, according to the site, is rated at 33 percent. But also, logically, it makes sense. Uh, you know, again, it's that small home favorite, the Tampa minus two and a half. Not to mention the fact that Chicago looked really bad last week and Tampa looked really good winning on the road. Um, so who the hell is taking the Bears here? So that's kind of the way you have to look at this type of thing. So I think right off the bat, the Bears plus two and a half, extremely strong. So I think the Bears are automatically kind of a candidate play and New England is right in there. Um, Carolina, New Orleans, three point spread. We don't We don't mess with that. Chargers, Tennessee. Um, so Tennessee is only 34%. So let's take a look at it. Uh, yeah. So once again, you have a, that two and a half point spread thing. And not to mention the Chargers again, that was there, you know, they had all these guys that people know, you know, with Eckler and 
and, and Herbert and, and, and Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, all this stuff. And Tennessee is just kind of like known as kind of a, you know, kind of a pedestrian type team. Um, and uh, it's only two and a half points. So you'd think that people would be really inclined to take the Chargers. Now, again, it's at Tennessee, so it, it's not a, it's not perfect. But I think Tennessee plus the two and a half here um, makes a lot of sense as far as a, a contrarian play. So it was kind of hard to find them last week. This week, they're kind of jumping out right off, right off the board. I don't think we're going to get a clean six, or a clean five, but maybe. So, so far, we, New England, good play. Tampa Bay, I mean, Chicago, excellent play. And I think Tennessee, good play. Baltimore, Cincinnati, three points right on the number. No thanks. Uh, Atlanta, Green Bay, not a real consensus. And you just don't get the feeling that either of these teams are more popular than the other. It's the minus one. It just doesn't really do anything. Um, Giants. Minus four and a half on the road. See here you have like com com competing interests, which is why the consensus is pretty close. On the one hand, you have Arizona is supposed to be really bad this year. Yet on the other hand, you have the Giants who just lost 40 to nothing. So I don't think that people are going to be particularly on one of these teams one way or the other. So this is probably a, a pass. So here we go. You have Detroit against Seattle. They have Detroit projected at 59% consensus, and it makes sense, right? Detroit is coming off a big win against Kansas City on the road. And Seattle at home looked just awful against the Rams. Um, and it's that it's 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 not quite at six and a half, but it's four and a half. And it's just very, very tempting to just go play Detroit here. So uh I think that Seattle is a very, very strong play here. So right here we have. Just to review, you have New England, good play. Chicago, excellent play. Tennessee, good play. Uh, Seattle, good to excellent play. I mean, these are really, really strong. Is this four picks already? You have to choose? Uh, all right. Uh, San Fran at the Rams. So this one is, is kind of interesting because uh, you have consensus – saying that people are on San Francisco, but it kind of flies in the face of what I've been saying. Um, people, I would imagine people wouldn't want to play a road eight point favorite. Okay. Especially when the Rams are looked pretty good last game, but I think people still have the impression the Rams are really bad, uh, which they well might be. And San Francisco did look really good. So uh, these are con competing interests. I don't think there's any real consensus one way or the other. Uh, Vegas against Buffalo. So this one is going to be fun because I, this is something you don't see too often. You have a 60% consensus on Vegas as an underdog. And I think the reason why is because Buffalo looked just so bad last week. Um, they, they lost the Jets on the Jets as a favorite. And they are laying eight and a half, which is, again, above that seven-point thing. And the Vegas, Vegas won on the road um, against Denver. So... Uh, I think Buffalo looks pretty good here. So let's 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 review right now. We're not even done yet, but we have New England, good play. Chicago, excellent play. Tennessee, good play. Uh, Seattle, very good play. Buffalo, good play. Let's continue on. Indy, Houston, nothing really, just a minus one point favorite. Nobody really wants either of these teams. Um, uh, not that nobody wants either of these teams. I don't think there's one big consensus one way or the other. Um, Kansas City against Jacksonville. Ooh, I think we're missing one. Hey, we'll get to it in a minute. Uh, Kansas City, Jacksonville. Nothing really. You do have, actually, this is interesting. KC is minus three and a half on the road. People love to play the three and a half point home dogs. But the problem is Kansas City is always so popular that I think it just kind of offsets that. So. I think this is game's probably a pass. Cleveland against Pittsburgh. So you have a couple of things going for you. You have Pittsburgh with that two and a half point number. Uh, you have Pittsburgh coming off a big, pretty bad loss. You have Cleveland coming off a pretty big win. And so you, get, you can get Cleveland laying only two and a half against Pittsburgh. Only thing is that it's on the road. Um so I consider what uh, Pittsburgh again just kind of a good play. Um, 
When I say if the problem is on the road, I'm talking about from Cleveland's perspective. So I think Cleveland is like a good play. Washington at Denver, Denver a home three and a half point favorite, no big deal. Uh, probably just past that one. Uh, Dallas Giants consensus is pretty close. The line is nothing particular. Uh, probably a pass there. And then you get to this game, which is tonight. Now, according to the consensus, you have pretty even both sides, 53%, 47%. But a couple of things really stand out to me. First of all, you have the perfect spread. Not perfect spread. If it was six and a half, it would be better. Okay. But it's a number that people can play kind of Philly and say, well, all I got to do is win by a touchdown. Philly is kind of the Super Bowl, you know, kind of super the NFC champion, so they're well known. They're a good team, and Minnesota is just hated by everybody. I mean, honestly, like Minnesota just can't ever do anything right. So I, I'm kind of torn because this consensus doesn't seem to make sense. Like, who would really take Minnesota in this game? And then the other thing is when you look back at last week's breakdowns, here's one thing you'll see: nobody play this Lions Chiefs game, the Thursday night game. So I'm thinking like, is it possible that this Thursday game is just a game that's just always kind of ignored? Now what I'm probably going to do is go back and look at previous weeks. Um, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I wonder if I can do that. You know, I don't want to do that here live, but uh, I have been told that this Thursday night game is one that's not really piled on because people just want to wait. They want to see, you know, they wait till Sunday for whatever reason. But, you know, this is a very, very uh, intriguing uh, selection is to just go right off the bat and take Minnesota. I almost did that last week when it went with Detroit. Detroit was the same, pl- pretty much the same pick, right? Um, they were a four and a half point underdog on the road. You know, they're very, very low owned. You didn't get any leverage against the Chiefs because they were low on two, but against the rest of these picks, this was pretty pretty juicy. Okay, um, so I think that we have some pretty good candidate plays for for Circa this week. It's going to be, and again, I I, it's, I have like seven choices. It's going to be pro- either New England plus the two and a half, Chicago plus the two and a half, um. Tennessee plus the two and a half. Seattle plus the four and a half. Buffalo minus the eight and a half. Pittsburgh plus the two and a half. Or Minnesota plus the six. Um, so let me just, again, this is more for my own benefit. I'm, I'm just going to write all this out. Um, where am I going to write this? I always just old school here. It's going to write right on the notepad. Just to see what this all looks like. So New England, Chicago, and Chicago, I think is probably, like probably for sure. Tennessee, Seattle, Buffalo, Pitt, and uh, Minnesota. So we have, Okay, so not that many to choose from. So seven to get to five. Um, so with with any luck, the lines when they come out will make these decisions for these decisions for us. And this is one of those weird things. So let's just say that we like New England plus two and a half, and it comes out to three. We're not going to play. I know you're some people are like, well, you you you're telling me you take New England plus two and a half, you wouldn't take three. Yeah, because if it was three, they're, they're not going to be as low odds, right? Um, and likewise with all of these, if all of these two and a half point favorites or underdogs become three point underdogs, we're probably not going to play them because even though you'll get line value or whatever, um, not even line value, even though you're getting more than your, 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 you know, that you think you're going to get, the ownership is just going to swamp all of that. Okay. So that's what I'm kind of hoping. I'm kind of hoping that the lines just kind of take care of this and make a couple of these two and a half point favorites three. And then the remaining two and a half are the ones I'm going to end up taking. So again, I know this is not your normal against the spread type of analysis, but this is your not your normal against the spread thing. This is a contest. This is not a this is not um, 
This is not me betting with DraftKings. This is not me betting with the bookie. This is me just trying to figure out how to beat all these thousands of people that are trying to do that. Um, and I still believe that of the, what do we got? Uh, 33, was it 3,500? 40, of the 6,000 people that are doing this, I I really think less than 100. I, I'm, I'm just, maybe that's my ego getting away, but I really think less than 100 are even playing this right. I think of I think almost all, maybe 99, maybe 95% of the people playing this contest are just figuring out who their favorite players are. And I just think that's 100% wrong. Um, and so I'm going to try to do this. All right, that'll do it. Uh, good luck, me. Good luck, everybody.